Hi, my name is Nathan Vanzani and welcome back to Up The Science Ante. So today we're gonna be learning about some chemistry. Now, I have a uh, couple demonstrations here for you that you can turn into experiments. And then as we're going on, uh, they're gonna progressively be getting harder and a little cooler. So I'm gonna start off with one that I saw on the internet uh, a couple years ago. Now, what they, uh, what they said is if you don't want to buy helium, this is a good way to inflate the balloon. So what you do is you pour some vinegar inside of a bottle. It doesn't have to be any, a glass bottle. Just pour it inside of any bottle, just like that. And then you're gonna take some baking soda and put it inside a balloon. I already did that part, but you can just see there's some baking soda inside there. You're gonna put it over the lip of the bottle and then you lift up the balloon. <laughs> and you can see that it, it inflates. And it's gonna keep growing and growing. And then once it's all the way full, which it's almost done, what they said to do was to take it off, tie it up, and then when you let go, it should float. <laughs> that doesn't happen at all. What they failed to mention is CO2 is actually heavier than air, so this is gonna fall down. Now, I have a couple of little demos that we can do with uh, CO2 because it is a very cool chemical. Even though it can make stuff float, it has a lot of amazing properties. So the, the next thing I'm gonna do is the same reaction, but I'm gonna put it inside of a container. Now, uh, what they used to do a long time ago when they needed to collect gas to see what they're making, they actually uh, put a container upside down in water and then they would fill that container with gas. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for you here. So this container, I'm gonna use a pop bottle. And now if you go to do this at home, a challenge that I would give you is to see if you can get an exact amount of gas. So say 500 milliliters of gas, or see who in your family can get it the closest without going over. Now what I do to, to make this work so it doesn't react right away, is I put some baking soda on a either paper towel or a Kleenex, and then I put some vinegar inside of a bottle. Once again, it does not have to be a bottle like this. You can put this tube um, in the side of a plastic bottle as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and do this. I'll actually put a little bit more vinegar in here. All right, hopefully we have enough baking soda. Now I'm gonna take this bottle, I'm gonna fill it with water, and then I'm gonna put this tube inside this bottle. Now, I'm gonna put it upside down inside here. All right, now next I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it inside here and when I'm ready, I'm gonna shake it up and hopefully that releases the baking soda. So it helps if you have a second person to hold it. But I'm gonna go ahead and try right here. So like I said, I need to tip this upside down to make sure the gas stays in. Can you see that? All right, this bottle is completely filled with CO2. Now I'm gonna show you a really cool property that CO2 has. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep all that air inside the bottle and I'm gonna cap it. All right, now this bottle is entirely filled with CO2 and just a little bit of water. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this CO2 into that cup. Now, I realize it's gonna look kinda silly and then I have another cup here that I'm not gonna pour anything into and we're gonna have that as our control. All right, so I'm gonna take the CO2. I'm gonna be really careful, and I'm gonna pour it right inside this cup. Now, you shouldn't be able to see anything because CO2 is completely colorless. But I am pouring this gas inside the cup. Now, I'm gonna light a match and I'm gonna stick it inside this container, and then I'm gonna stick it inside this container. 
You notice nothing changes. It goes right out. CO2 is actually used in fire extinguishers a lot, and you can see why. It does an amazing job at putting out fire. So even though you can't see that gas, I clearly demonstrated it's still there. So this is a very cool phenomenon that you can do at home. Like I said, if you want to do an experiment at home, a good one to do is to see how much gas you guys can make and to see if you can get it exactly. So control how much baking soda, how much vinegar you're using, how you're capping it, and yeah, see how, how you do. I'd love to see your results. All right, now for the next experiment, I'm gonna get it set up. Um, we're gonna do some cool color changes. All right, this next one, I'm gonna show you a color change. Now, before I explain too much, I just wanna show it to you. So here I have a cup of water, and here's another cup. <laughs> now it's bright pink. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this container and I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into another one and we're gonna see what happens. And it goes right back to clear. Now, I obviously use a little bit more than just water. Now, what I did is I use what's called phenolphthalein and it's an indicator. So if there's a base in the water, it's gonna turn pink and if the water's acidic, it's gonna be clear. So this first cup, I put in some phenolphthalein, and the second cup, I put in um, a little bit of base. In this case, I used ammonia. And then in the last cup, I just put a little bit of acid inside of it. So then when it turned uh, alkaline or basic, it turned pink, and then when you pour it into an acid, it's gonna go back to clear. Now, a challenge you can do at home is to see how many times you can make it go purple um, back to clear, purple back to clear, purple back to clear, or pink to clear, pink to clear. The record, uh, the best record I've seen is 13. So I'm gonna see if you guys can get anything higher than that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get a, uh, get a couple more color changes set up for you, and then I'll be right back. All right, this uh, next one that I have is called instant soda. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take uh, two different solutions that I made. Uh, this one is just cornstarch mixed in water and then have some hydrogen peroxide added into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing. But for this one, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna show, you, show you this one a little bit better. So I'm gonna put in a hundred here. So I'm gonna put this in here, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of iodine. Now this reaction alone is kinda of cool, but then when I put them together, it's even better. Now I want, I want you to watch as I pour this iodine into this solution. You would think that this brown liquid would stain this, uh, what looks like water, but it turns it right back to clear. Now, what I need to do is I need to put a little bit of water in here, then I'm gonna heat up both the solutions, and we will be right back. So, I'm gonna heat these up. All right, and we're gonna let those warm up and I'll be right back. All right, now that our uh, solutions are all warmed up, I'm gonna go ahead and do this instant soda experiment. So I have two, uh, two solutions here, and then when I mix them, the reaction's gonna, gonna, going to start. So I'm gonna go and pour in this first one. All right, and just to make the reaction happen a little bit more uniformly, I'm gonna turn on a uh, stirring mechanism. You do not need to do this to be able to make it work. You can just honestly shake out the bottom, it'll work just the same. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the second solution here. Now I'm gonna back away and then just give it one minute and you're gonna see what happens. Now, another thing that you can do at home is you can mix this together you can cap it and you can give it to somebody and have them hide it. And then you can tell them, hey, um, I think it changed colors, go look again. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and back away and let you uh, watch what happens. It'll take a minute. <laughs> D 
did you see that it just turned black in an instant? So that is uh, what I call instant soda. Uh, you can do this experiment in a lot of different ways, different variations. You can make it take a long time or 10, 15, 20 minutes, two hours, or you can just have it happen in 30 seconds. All right, for my last demonstration, uh, what kind of chemist demonstration would this be without a little bit of fire? So what I have here is I have some uh, acid, some aluminum foil, and some copper sulfate, and that's gonna make our flame uh, a nice, beautiful color. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our copper sulfate in here first, and then I'm gonna put in some aluminum foil, and they're crumpled up little balls. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here. And then I'm gonna add some uh, muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid. And give it a little stir. And then when it starts to fizz, so right now it's heating up, heating up, and now you can see all the heat, and I'm gonna go and light this. <laughs> Look at that beautiful blue flame. And then you'll probably notice it might start to go down into the bottle a little bit because it needs some oxygen to be able to burn. But doesn't that copper make that flame look beautiful? Thank you again for uh, joining me with this uh, chemistry demonstration. So I am going to have all the information on how to do these experiments and a few more uh, posted on the Metro website. There should be uh, links below that are going to be able to give you access to all this information on how to do all these, what were the exact ingredients, how did it work. And if you have any questions, you uh, sure to let me know. All right, thank you very much.